guys, Jennifer here and welcome to The Family Fudge. In today's video, we're continuing on to the next part of our UK journey. I'm gonna take you on a tour of the farmhouse we stayed in, which may or may not have been haunted, and was in a pretty popular location. We'll take you along with us as we shop at the UK's largest supermarket chain, Tesco, for the very first time. We'll share with you some amazing news we had during our stay, and then I'll tell you exactly why driving for the first time in the UK brought me to tears. If you guys missed our last video, we ended leaving Scotland and taking the train back to London, which was about a four and a half hour journey. Once we made it back to King's Cross Station, we hired ourselves an Uber XL to take us to our car rental place. And I kid you not, this is one of the most uncomfortable Uber rides we'd ever had. First of all, even though it was a Uber XL, we were super cramped and barely fit with all of us and our luggage. Next, this car was not only super stuffy, but there was no AC to speak of, and the entire vehicle reeked of smoke. Now, unfortunately, this car's radio was also set very loudly to a doom and gloom news station, and that definitely didn't help the vibe. Now, to me, the driving felt really aggressive. There were several times where I thought, we were about to smash into the car in front of us or hit a pedestrian. It was really scary. Now, I don't want to make this sound like a complaint fest, and certainly I've experienced bad Uber rides in the US as well. It's kind of just the luck of the draw when it comes to Ubers. But for me, after 90 minutes in traffic and paying nearly 70 pounds for this ride, I was not only disappointed, but I was also completely car sick and stressed out. And when I'm looking back at this video, I can totally tell by the look on the kids' faces that they were feeling the same way by the time we finally made it to our car rental place. For our vehicle, we decided to go with the only rental option they had that would not only fit all of us, but it would fit all of our bags as well. And that meant a nine-seater van. Now, we didn't realize this at the time, but having such a big van like this ended up making fitting on narrow roads more difficult and it also made finding big enough parking spaces more difficult in some areas too. So bigger is not always better when it comes to rental vehicles, especially in the UK. And then came the moment of truth. We actually had to drive ourselves in the UK. Now, I started out pretty optimistic about driving for the first time here because even though the steering wheel is on the opposite side of the car than the US, and they drive on the opposite side of the road than the US, I've actually had experience driving in a foreign country myself before. When I worked in Japan, I did drive a company vehicle and I had no problem with that. It was pretty easy. But then again, I was out in the country and not on narrow roads like these ones in the UK. Although my husband was pretty fine with driving in the UK, my optimism quickly turned into nervousness. I thought it was super scary. First of all, some of the roads that we went on were so narrow, we actually had to pull over and wait because our van wouldn't fit. Number two, the first time we got on the highway, we accidentally got lost. And then of course, number three, we have to talk about the roundabouts. There's just so many cars going pretty much all at once and you kind of have to be lucky to not hit anybody. We really don't have a lot of roundabouts where we're from back in the States, so this was definitely new for us. So yes, it ended up being a very long day with our train ride from Scotland, our horrible Uber, and driving ourselves for the first time and getting lost. It was just a very long and stressful day. By the time we made it to our Airbnb, I was crying tears of joy. Hi. What you doing? I was just playing with that. Okay, should we give a house tour? Yeah! Okay, let's go. Okay, so here we have a little entryway. Oh, it's quite a big step up. 
And then we have a little area to put your shoes on. And then you come into the kitchen, which is a really good size. That's one of the reasons I wanted this Airbnb specifically. Another thing I love about this kitchen is a huge bay window. There are so many little birds and little creatures that come by. It's really fun to watch them. I'm going to open it. Is it cold? Yeah, it can yeah it's outside. actually cold today. It's been kind of warm. I've been really surprised that we haven't needed jackets, but today we're probably gonna need some jackets. Okay, so after the kitchen, we come into this nice dining room, which has enough room for everybody. And then right around the corner, we have the little family room. Again, enough room for everybody, which is kind of hard to find. When looking for Airbnbs, there's a cute little fireplace and a tiny little TV here in the corner. Should we show them the closet? Yeah! The kids are super excited about this closet because it's actually full of toys, toys and things for kids to play with, which is really thoughtful. This Airbnb is definitely set up for families. What else should we show them? Um, upstairs. Okay, before we go upstairs, I'll show you the view out this window. Again, I love the view, it's so peaceful out here. And we definitely have to mention the farm park next door. So the Airbnb we stayed in is near a town called Leighton Buzzard. I think that's how you say it, but it's just over an hour northwest of London. One of the reasons we picked this particular Airbnb is because the people who own it also own a place called Mead Open Farm, which is right next door. And the tickets were included in the price of our stay. Now, if any of you guys are from this area or if you've ever been here before, please let me know in the comments down below. This place was so awesome and it had so many different activities for the kids to do each day. And then while I'm over here in the kitchen, I'll show you my two souvenirs. I got the Starbucks mug from Edinburgh and the Starbucks mug from London. If you guys have seen my kitchen organization video, you'll know that I collect these mugs. Even though I'm not really a big fan of hot drinks, I still love these mugs. Should we go into the boys' room now? Yeah! So the boys' room is downstairs, the girls' room and the parents' room is upstairs. Super bright and spacious, two little twin beds, a beautiful window. So right up the little staircase, we have this pretty old looking hallway with an exposed beam. That's really cool. Oh, you're so tall, you can reach it. Before we go in the girls' room, let's check out the second bathroom. Yeah. It's got a little shower and a sink. Very nice. Another very cozy little space but it has everything that we need. Here's Kenzie's bed and Miss Lily's bed. We have a little dresser and a fan and another really pretty view. I'm gonna open it. One thing that I noticed about these houses that they don't have screens. So right now there's no bugs, but mosquitoes could totally get in with the window open. Yeah. Next room. Yeah. Let's keep going. And then we have mom and dad's room, which is pretty much all bright white Ikea furniture. Very nice. Over here we have another bathroom, which has been really nice for six people to have three bathrooms. That is awesome. Oh yes, and of course the view out of this window is also beautiful. You can see the farm park right over there. Okay, let's go down the creaky stairs. And if you're really tall, you gotta be careful. Right here, you could totally hit your head. You gotta kinda duck down to get all the way down the stairs. 
Okay, so now we are kind of low on groceries. We were able to stop at an Aldi on the drive here, but we definitely want to head over to Tesco. We have not been to a Tesco yet, and I've heard that their meal deals are the best. So right off the bat, not grocery related at all, we found some Halloween hair accessories. What'd you find? Well, I think I'm gonna be a bat for Halloween. Ooh. Okay, look what we found out. The little kid magazines and books come with little toys and games. What'd you find? Krispy Kreme. I didn't know they had Krispy Kreme here. Oh, they don't really. They mostly sold out. Oh, but look at this. They have a Jaffa nut donut. So like, like a Jaffa cake is chocolate and orange. Interesting. There's only a few left. Oh, they have vegan options. Look at this one comes with toys, little trucks. Cool. Now these would be cute in a lunch. Little teddy bear chips. I guess they're chips. Oh, potato snacks. What about some cheese footballs? Yeah. Look how cute these little sweaters are. But of course, I think here they call these jumpers, not sweaters. So cute. Look at these little yogurts. And look at yogurt lollies. What's a yogurt lolly? Do you freeze it? I don't understand. Look at these ones. They say great for lunch boxes, but what exactly are they? Oh, it's a strawberry and a raspberry. I, I get it now. <laughs> Do you want to try them? We found teeny tiny Peppa Pig yogurt. Look how small it is. We found the bread section and it is crazy full of stuff. This bread is huge. Jumbo slices. I love it. Hey, look at this one. It's like little squares put together. Almost like a Twinkie, but not. Mm, Eccles cake. I've heard of these. It looks like um, a scone. What exactly is a treacle tart? I've heard about it on Harry Potter, but I don't really know what it's made of. Sticky pudding cake. I found it. Try me with custard. Hmm. This is good. What'd you find? This and a princess cake with a crown? Whoa. That is a cool cake. A unicorn cake. Oh my goodness, what is that one? A Harry Potter cake. A beautiful rainbow dip cake. Look at these. Like a log cake. One with a pig and a caterpillar. <laughs> Look at this cute little sloth. And check out the eggs, you guys. Just on the shelf, not refrigerated at all. Definitely not how we do it in the States. Now, I have actually tried Marmite before and I am not a fan. <laughs> we found a Disney bag. Now we have to go down the cereal aisle. I'm really interested to see what they have that's different and what they have that's the same. Oh, look, they have Crave, but the box looks really different. And Cookie Crisp. This looks so different. They've got a Nesquik cereal. I've never seen that in the States before. They've got lots of different kinds of Weetabix. 
Now when I was a kid I had the big plain kind and I really liked them. So it's interesting to see all these new flavors. Here we have the Rice Krispies. These definitely look a lot different than we're used to seeing in the States. And of course they have Cheerios. What exactly is a honey monster? I think that this is Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Do you think that's what this is? It looks like Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Okay, so that is the end of the cereal aisle. Let's go check what other lunchbox goodies we can find. Baked bean with pork sausages. Minion pasta. Scotch broth. What exactly is a scotch broth? Here's some lunchbox snacks. Got little jellies. I think these are like jello cups. Some little sponge cake, sticky toffee pudding, that's my favorite. You can get these little tiny pudding cups. I found the chocolate oranges. These, I actually really like these. These are the ones where you whack them on the countertop and they split apart. These are so good. I'm not exactly sure what a twiglet is, but it looks like a barbecue flavored Cheeto. Now I think because this is a bigger Tesco, they have like home stuff, like decor and candles. They have toys. I also found some press-on nails. Now this looks interesting. It's called a Candy King. You can fill up these little cups with whatever loose candy you want. This looks like the cracker section. And the chocolate section. Now I recognize a lot of these things. Some of them I've never seen. And then this looks like the cookie section. Although I'm pretty sure if you want a cookie here, you have to ask for a biscuit. We found a shortcake biscuit. I'm not sure if that's like strawberry shortcake or like Scottish shortcake. This one is a bourbon cream. Hmm. Here we have the Capri Sun section. We have orange, black currant, we have cherry, and mixed fruit. And then they don't have any good to grows, but they do have these little fruit shoot bottles. Check out these toaster potato waffles. I guess it's like a hash brown that you can actually make in your toaster. Now, if you want a popsicle here, you have to find yourself an iced lolly. These look so good. Now, I would compare Tesco to a Publix or a Kroger in the US. It wasn't exactly like a Target or a Walmart. And I know not all of the locations have clothes. Some just have food. Overall, I love getting to explore grocery stores and getting to see all the things that are different, all the things that are the same. And at this Tesco, I definitely found a lot of items that would be perfect to make cute lunches. Now, after we left Tesco, we had one more stop to make because on this day, we got some amazing news and it's all thanks to you guys. This was the day where we reached 1 million subscribers on this channel. So we made a quick stop to get some balloons to help celebrate. We started this channel over six years ago now, back even before Griffin was born. And I know that some of you guys have been subscribed to us since way back even then. Over these six years, we've posted over a thousand videos, which is crazy to think about. And we've had over 246 million views. So I wanna thank you guys so, so much for coming along with us on our journey, and of course, for subscribing. We couldn't do this without you. Stay tuned for our next video. It's going to include the Cotswolds, castles, fun lunches, and all things Harry Potter.